Welcome to On The Curbs, I'm your host Team Albus Daily. Joining me on The Curbs this week is extremely racing driver Johan Christofferson. This year he's racing for the Rosberg X Racing Team alongside Aussie legend Molly Taylor. We caught up recently to chat about how the season is going so far, what got Johan into motorsport to begin with, World Rallycross and much more. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi, Johan. Thanks for being here today. First of all, how are you? Fine. And um, yeah, thanks for having me. My pleasure. So first thing I always like to ask everyone who I talk to on here, what got you into motorsport to begin with? Um, uh, my father has been competing in motorsport since I was born, basically. Um, but I started driving myself pretty late. So I started uh, when I turned the year I turned 20. Uh, before that, I was mostly flying around in the service park when my father was competing and um, uh, doing cross-country skiing myself, actually, because I've always been a competitive person. I always like to compete. So, uh, yeah, then uh, when my father had uh, his off-season, then we were driving all around in Sweden and doing cross-country skiing. So, uh, Not a bad so that's... Yeah, exactly. So uh, that was basically the path how I got into motorsport is that I've always been interested and I've been in a service park since I was very small. And uh, yeah, then I started to drive myself when I was 20. So then you've had a racing career, obviously, and then you're now an extreme E. What made you want to join it? Uh, I think, I mean, first of all, I, I've seen it a little bit uh, on the social media and, and uh, stuff like that. And then uh, I got in contact with Nico. And uh, yeah, I just uh, the whole process of the new Extreme E with uh, the new way of thinking of motorsport, and you know that is not only the competition, but it's also um, another message uh, while while we are competing. Um, and also, I really like the format of uh, it's something completely new with a female and a male driver. Um, so yeah, I, I really I really liked it, and then. The fact that it's actually full electric and yeah, that's uh, pretty. So you pretty think they're electric when you see them racing, would you? <laughs> no, so and, and I think also the the electric now is really the way the way to be and the, or the way to go and the, and the place to be as a driver. So uh, yeah, that's why basically. You mentioning the the female teammate that everyone has there as well. I was talking to Molly few weeks ago I think and she was singing your praises as a teammate so I was wondering what what is it like having her as a teammate for you then? Um, yeah I really like Molly first of all just as a person and she's really easygoing and relaxed and uh, I guess properly you know like Aussie, Aussie people used to be I think that's that's at least uh, how I see them so always happy always smiling and uh, on top of that she's a very very good driver as well and uh, She's really willing to learn um, and yeah, trying to be open-minded and, and always, you know, coming with good info and, and we are trying to work as good as possible together. And I think the way me and Molly working together is uh, part of the success we had in the first two races. So uh, yeah, it's been, it's been all good. And uh, I mean, especially the final in, in Senegal, she did absolutely perfect and, and really, really brilliant. So, uh, yeah, from there so on, it was just... In terms of starts to the season, you've done pretty good so far in both rounds. So. Yeah, well, it's not, not too bad. So, uh, the team had good results. So, it means both me and Molly did good. So then, I mean, you've, you've had the success, like I said, but uh, what's been the biggest challenge of Extreme E so far? I think the biggest challenge is... Uh, like the unknown, there is so many things that we don't know beforehand going to the event. Um, so you kind of have to prepare for the unknown. Uh, sounds strange, but that's actually how it is. And try to be prepared for changing your plans. And, you know, you, you have an idea and then you have to be prepared to be able to change it. Um, and then that it's so um, really, really big differences from... It's really the mix of all them. I mean, I've done rally, I've done circuit racing, I've done rally cross, and this is really a little bit of everything. On top of that, there is something completely new with the the size of the car and the locations we go to, the surface we drive on, 
Um, and again, the format with a female and a male driver. So I think that's, that's I think, is the biggest challenge, um, those, those few things. So you say, you say they're the biggest challenge, but at the same time, you've, I mean, regardless of how difficult it might be behind the scenes, you've made it look pretty easy so far for, for your team. So what, what, how have you been able to master it so, so quickly in, in the first two rounds? Um, I think we we have prepared well. The team is doing a very very good job on on preparation as well. They've delivered a very good car for me and Molly uh, every time we've been out driving uh, to collect info and data. And uh, yeah, me and Molly is working well together with the team. And uh, yeah, the team is very professional. Um, Nico is also very very keen on on being really hands on and trying to to give us all the info and all the knowledge he has from his side. Um, so there is a lot of experience from Formula 1, from DTM, from the team, and from Rallycross for myself, and from Rally from Molly. So and I think that's, that's very, very important that we are able to bring all that info together and trying to, to maximize the performance on the track. And then also, I mean, I can only talk for myself during the driving that we've been pretty lucky as well sometimes. Maybe not luck, but... But we, we we had the margin on our side, especially with the overtake on, on Timmy in uh, Saudi Arabia, and yeah, that was and also quite the move. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, there is there is small margins, but that's how it is in motorsport. And you're saying there's there's quite a variety of people involved in Extreme from all over the motorsport uh, world. Who would you love to see and race in an Extreme in the future? Um, yeah, there is some pretty good names in there already, but uh, yeah, I don't know, Kimi Räikkönen maybe. I was going to say, I was thinking, Kimmy, it'd be interesting to see what he would do in that situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why not? I would say Kimmy. Kimmy. Then what's a fun story that you can share from behind the scenes in Extreme? Uh, I don't know. Um, but I think the whole travel thing, both uh, both travel locations has been a bit tricky. Both, I mean, on top of it, on top of traveling to... To the middle of nowhere in Saudi Arabia and the middle of nowhere in Senegal, um, it is a bit of a challenge to get there. And then on top of that, the the, the COVID situation and um, the traveling towards uh, Greenland also doesn't seem to be super easy. So I will leave. I will have a race this weekend in in Sweden, and then I leave already on Monday, starting to travel to start driving on on Saturday next week in Greenland. So uh, I think I that's maybe maybe the 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 most uh, exciting things behind the scene of, of Victory Me. Otherwise, I think, you know, basically our team is, we are having a lot of fun during the weekends. Um, nothing particular, but it's just a nice group of people uh, enjoying racing at the same time being very serious. It sounds like a great dynamic to have inside the team there. Yeah. So then I couldn't, couldn't interview you without touching on this at least briefly. You've been World Rallycross champion three times. What does that feel like? Uh, yeah, feels good. I mean, <laughs> when I was starting to, I mean, my father was competing in Rallycross and I was at my first Rallycross event when I was about six or four months old. So uh, I know Rallycross since many years and uh, started with circuit racing myself. And then... Um, yeah, starting to look to drive Rallycross myself 2013. And then we set the goal uh, together with uh, our partners to to build the car ourselves. And then, um, yeah, starting to, to work from 14, 15 and then uh, win uh, the World Championship in 2016. That was the, the three-year aim we had. And uh, it sounded like uh, it is a, a tough, it is a tough goal, uh, but... Um, you know, when we started, it was a little bit like, okay, there is another guy that wants to be able to try to achieve this and this, and uh, and it's not so easy. But uh, we were one year delayed, but then I won 17 and 18, and then uh, together with our family team, uh, 2020, where we started the journey, uh, 2014. So uh, yeah, all of That's them are very special. Back full circle. Sorry. That's a nice way to yeah, bring exactly. it back full circle there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So 2020 was the third time and, and first time will always be very special, but the third time was also very special as it was really with our family team and with the same mechanics and, and, and the guys that we started already back in 2014. So, so yeah, and I mean, it just, 
when you when you have such a goal, um, when you are able to achieve it, and then are able to achieve it even three times, you know, when you are there and you are really working towards the goal, you don't really think about it so much. But at the same time, like during the third time, I try to stop in the middle of everything and try to enjoy the moment as well. I'm not always just hunting the the trophies and the points. So, um, yeah, kind of learn a little bit how to enjoy it during the journey as well. Um, and when you finally are able to achieve it once and two times, then it's a little bit of that. You get the monk off your back and you, you can relax a bit more. And, and uh, yeah, it feels nice. It's interesting to see how the mentality changes from after you win it the first time to then the next, the second and the third time to see how that, that evolves. And there's, would you say there's less pressure that you put on yourself for that? or? I think, yes, you put a bit less pressure on yourself um, after you've been able to win it the first time. Um, but also, I, I got my first child 2015. And then as he become to be a little bit elder as well, like when he turned two and three, then you also even more realize in life uh, that there is not only the competition. There is so, so many other things uh, outside of the competition as well. So it kind of come both at the same time, you know, that I was able to win 17 and 18 and then Colin was growing up and, and so on. So, uh, yeah, it's, I, I think I put less pressure on myself, but still, you know, you are, you know that it, what it takes to be able to go there and win. So um, it's like when I did cross country skiing, if you don't go out and run, every day and train every day there's no fun to go to the competition so if you don't prepare there's 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 no no reason to show up so yeah. um still, still trying to do the homework always always do the homework is the important message there i think yeah yeah so then a couple of fun questions to finish off would you rather have a mullet for you uh, i had to google ball? mullet actually because i didn't know what it was but in sweden we call it like a like an ice hockey ice hockey <laughs> hairstyle that's right or I mean, is that was the I think you might watch more ice hockey than me, but it's the right thing, I think, if you're uh, thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with a long uh, on the back and short on the side. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah then, I, then I, I think I'd rather be bold <laughs> and wear the cap. <laughs> yeah. uh, finally, what's a guilty pleasure that you have? Um, I don't have, I, it's nothing particular, but I do like ice cream a lot. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm having a very hard time ordering if you have a scoop or my friends are going for one or two scoops because we just finished a massive meal. I struggling to, to have less than three. <laughs> so and if there's possible, if there is available to put soft ice on the top, I would do it plus the topping. So uh, I guess I guess. But that's maybe not a guilty pleasure. But otherwise, I actually started. 2017 when there was so much motorsport going on in my head then i started to i bought a playstation and then i was just starting to play call of duty so i play a little bit uh, with my wife's uh, or not wife but fiance or girlfriend or whatever you want to call it um her her small brother we used to play sometimes when colin went to bed and when sandra is sleeping and then we just stay up until you know, 3 a.m. playing Call of Duty. Very easy to spend a lot of time doing that. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, and it's really nice to just be there with your PlayStation on the screen and just sitting there, um, you know, having some candy and, and just playing Call of Duty for a couple of hours, not being able to think about any more sport at all, just yeah. focusing on the game. So I think I think that's my biggest uh, guilty passion. So what, what's the favorite flavor of ice cream then? What's the one you go for? Uh, that's the problem. I have too many. That's uh, why I have to take so many scoops. <laughs> so at least you can mix and match. Yeah, exactly. Well, here you are, Johan. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. I want to wish you best of luck in Greenland and for the rest of the Extreme E season. And yeah, thanks for being here today. Yeah, thank you very much. It was awesome to catch up with Johan. I think Molly was definitely right to sing his praises when I spoke with her a few weeks ago. And his hoping we get to see Johan racing alongside Kimmy in Extreme in the future. Wouldn't that be great? I want to thank Johan again for coming onto the show, and I wish him and the Rosberg X racing team the best of luck for the rest of the Extreme season. Join me again soon when I'll be chatting to another famous face from the world of motorsport.
And in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and check out the other videos on the On The Curves YouTube channel. Away from YouTube, you can find me over on DriveTribe and feel free to follow me on Instagram at t.elbers.daily.drivetribe. You can also find me over on GP Grandstand TV, where I'm part of their weekly podcast. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you again next week for the next episode.